to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening. It has been more than 30 hours since former Black Jewel coal miners started their protest in Harlan County. We've been following closely as they block a train in as they block train tracks in Cumberland, making sure a train loaded with coal that they mined does not get through. Over the last month, WYMT has brought you stories of many coal miners with nowhere to go, many who have no way to feed their children, many who have no access to their retirement. One learned he had a brain tumor on the same day Black Jewel stripped him of his pay. Tonight, their fellow miners continue to say they will not move until they get their money. WYMT's Emily Bennett is at the tracks in Cumberland. Emily. Yes, Connor, a downpour earlier did not dampen the spirits here. It's been a very eventful day in Cumberland, and while miners are exhausted, they are sticking together as a family. Not going down without a fight. You can take a look around at these guys. They're not thugs. They're not here to cause problems. They want answers, and they're going to get them. This fight is personal to Cumberland Mayor Charles Riley. His brother and son are both Black Jewel coal miners. The doors have been slammed closed and they're forgotten about. Riley's son just got married and went on his honeymoon. He had actually cashed his check before he left, only to come back to find out that he's $1,900 overdrawn. And the bank calls him every day, wanting to know, hey, where's our money? Others, like miner Quincy Adams, have started to look for another job. The way it's looking right now, it does, we're not going to have a, uh, a good resolution to this, or at least a, a quick resolution, so I need to look at my other options. He is not alone. Hundreds have a similar struggle. Well, right now we have 400 men in Harlan County that are looking for a job, and the, there's not enough uh, coal companies here or coal mines open in order to uh, do that. Until they have answers, they will be sitting on the railroad tracks together. Some describe it as a brotherhood. I actually cried when I, when I got here just seeing the love from everybody. And they plan on keeping that family bond strong. Now, while the miners are very tired, they, they don't want any trouble. They're staying positive and they really, they just want to get paid. In Harlan County, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. All right, thank you, Emily, for that report. Well, community members continue to support the Black Jewel coal miners as they protest across train tracks in Cumberland. Among su the support from local business and community members, State Representative Adam Bowling stood on the, on the tracks with miners. Bowling said seeing the families and small children that are affected was heart-wrenching. He says one of the most frustrating things is that coal traveling on those tracks would go to profit a company who is still not paying its miners. Talking with these miners, I, I understand their anger, their frustration, um, everything. I'm angry and I'm frustrated myself. Um, you, you know, here you have a company that's going through bankruptcy, but they have between 100 and 500 million dollars in assets. The miners told our reporters they do not know how long they expect to be on the tracks, but they will stay as long as they need to. And today we learned Black Jewel officials are not expected in court again until Saturday. Previously, it was scheduled for tomorrow. We've heard plans are being made to try and take buses full of miners to Charleston, West Virginia for those hearings. Well, that cold front continues to move through the mountains, bringing those scattered showers and storms. And those have caused some trouble for some of our friends. Let's go ahead and take you, though, as we do have that flash flood warning still in effect for Wayne County. You can see rain still moving through that area. Haven't gotten any reports of flooding over there, so that still goes until about 1145, so 45 more minutes on that. We do have this flood warning. Now, that is for Jackson County. There has been some issues there. That goes until about 430 in the morning. We got reports of Lower Atkins Road near Route 421 was impassable right around 730 this evening. We hope to have some more information as we head into really the next couple of days on that area. Wise County, you guys are under a flood advisory. That is until 12 a.m. on your Wednesday. And as we go ahead and take a look at a bigger picture, the good news is, is these showers are really starting to die down. Like I said, they brought us some issues today, really just that heavy rain as that cold front continues to slowly push through the mountains. You'll notice satellite and radar. We've seen those pop up showers and storms really throughout the day. Good news is those die down as we head into the next couple of days. I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. Connor.
All right, thank you, Paige. Well, Kentucky State Police were called out to a shooting on Starlight Drive in Pulaski County yesterday. Troopers say 24-year-old Devin Griffith was shot by his father, 47-year-old Somerset Police Sergeant Jason Griffith. They say the shooting stemmed from an argument between the two. Devin Griffith was flown to the UK, was flown to UK where he's being treated for his injuries and listed in stable condition. A Somerset Police spokesperson confirms that Jason Griffith is a sergeant with the Somerset Police. He is on administrative leave while state police investigate the shooting. The case will be heard by a grand jury. And a fun day at the Brakes Interstate Park almost took a turn for the worse for one Pike County family. A venomous snake bit seven-year-old Maddox Leedy's hand. It happened near the pool area. In the beginning, his family thought it was a sting, but it turned out to be worse. Park Superintendent Austin Bradley says it's important to be aware of your surroundings no matter where you are. So we just always encourage everybody to uh, always be alert, even, even in developed portions of the park. Now, 12 vials of antivenom later, Maddox is expected to be okay. As you can see in that video, right now the area is roped off. Officials with the Brakes Interstate Park have filled holes near the pool. And there is something positive, and there is some positive news tonight, excuse me, for former Eric C. Khan clients. The former attorney is currently serving a 27-year sentence in federal prison for defrauding the Social Security system out of more than $600 million. His former clients were stripped of their Social Security benefits, but after a meeting tonight with Prestonsburg attorney Ned Pillersdorf, some found out there they are one step closer to receiving their Social Security checks. Even though 500 people are still without benefits, two hundreds of those with cases in the Appeals Council should get a check in the mail soon. Those who are receiving benefits are asked to make sure their mailing address is correctly documented with the Social Security Administration as checks will be mailed instead. And attorneys are also warning former clients to be wary of scammers. We will have more on this story on Mountain News this morning. Well, it's a race against the clock for one school system. Jenkins Independent School officials are working on a nearly $2 million upgrade. The measures prompted by recent school shootings across the country. Mike Jenton, superintendent of Jenkins Independent Schools, says it's on it's an unfortunate situation, but it allows the schools to make some needed upgrades along the way. The new door systems, they have uh, alarms on them, so if a door is propped open, uh, we'll know about it any time of day, 24 hours a day. Um, you know, there will only be um, you know, three or four entrance doors to each building. All the rest of the doors will be exit only. A new parking lot, locker rooms, and bathrooms are also part of the upgrade. Superintendent Jenton says some construction will continue once school starts, but as of now, school is set to start on time. And schools across Kentucky are adding signs to their common areas as an answer to a new rule that was recently passed through the General Assembly. All school districts in the Commonwealth are now required to display the national motto, In God We Trust, on their property. Floyd County Superintendent Danny Atkins says the schools in his district are already in the process of making that happen before school starts next week. He says the new signs should be an easy addition to the school, but also added that the decision to do so was not a statement from the school board. He says they're just following the law. That doesn't change a thing about the school. Uh, it's, it's just a new signage that uh, parents will see and students will see as they walk into school every day. The American Civil Liberty, Liberties Union opposed the new law, saying the motto has appeared, has the appearance of endorsing religion. And as summer comes to a close, many parents are thinking of all the ways to prepare for back to school. Well, officials in eastern Kentucky are doing the same by making sure the safety of your child is one thing you can check off that list. WYMT's Lacey Roberts was there for a bus safety training today and has more. The wheels on the bus go round and round. And today, these wheels are at Mountain View Elementary in Leslie County for school bus driver training. For the most part, all the controls here have stayed the same. But over here, uh, you've noticed we got a couple extra buttons this year on this bus, and we just want to make sure you're familiar with all those. Driving through a cone course designed to help drivers maneuver such a large vehicle, preparing bus drivers for any incidents that may occur. Last year we had zero. Blind spots have been the main cause of children getting hurt in the past. We have a lot of uh, uh, reverse accidents, uh, bumping into things and uh, trees and whatever. That is why this newly upgraded yellow bus 
includes a 360 degree camera. This system completely takes the blind spots out of the equation. So uh, when the turn signal is turned on, it shows that side of the bus. But what about on the bus? We're starting to see more children with chronic health problems. It's more important than ever that everyone's on board. Training on medical emergencies. District school nurse GD Hacker talks about the use of medical equipment. It's just more safety for the children, you know, on their part, that we know if the situation arises, what we can do for those children. Knowing what to do in these situations keeps the children on the bus going up and down all through the town. In Hyden, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. Just as a general reminder, if you are driving and you see flashing yellow lights, the school bus is preparing to stop. Bus loading and unloading is a process that needs everyone's attention. Well, coming up at 11, the FBI continues to investigate a mass shooting in California. And a cold front will continue to push out of the mountains. I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up.